Today on Cooking with a Lion, I'll be sharing one of my favorite recipes for a savory sauce, which employs a technique used mostly amongst pastry chefs. Plus, I'll be answering the question, what do you do when your fish smells a little fishy? And it's all happening right now. Let's get started. I'm sure you've heard the saying, fresh fish should smell like the ocean, not like fish. That is true, except sometimes. So you can have a fish that's freshly caught, you can put it on a boat, put it in a bag. By the time it gets to the customers, it's okay for it to have a little bit of a smell. So don't let that deter you. What I've done is I've taken this fresh Arctic char, I blocked it off into portions, and I run it under very cold water. And once it's rinsed off really nicely, all you have to do is make sure it's pet dry very well. Just give it a good pat. Don't manhandle it, just make sure it's dry. Now that the fish is dry, it's time to get started on that sauce. We start today's amazing savory sauce with the pastry chef's best friend. This is just regular table sugar. It's organic granulated sugar. I'm gonna put this pot or saucepan over, let's say, medium low heat. I'm gonna sprinkle the sugar in there, okay? Just give a little swirl so it's evenly distributed amongst the bottom of the pan. And then we wait. This is not something you wanna rush. What's gonna happen is even though it's medium low heat, you'll start to see the sugar granules melt and begin to caramelize. They'll become this beautiful light brown color. That's what we're looking for. And then we move on to the next phase of the recipe. The wonderful thing about caramelizing sugar, just look at that, is this beautiful golden caramel color is that regular table sugar just tastes sweet, which is great. But once you take sugar and you melt it into caramel, you get over a hundred different flavor compounds, which sugar by itself doesn't have. So you get so much more flavor out of the sugar itself. Now, if you find that when you're melting the sugar, it gets a little bit dark, it's okay to pull it off the heat and give it a little swirl. If all of it doesn't melt, that's okay. You don't wanna go too dark. But even if it smokes just a smidge, don't panic. Just pull it off the heat and move on to the next step, which is happening right now. I'll put it back on the heat. I'm gonna grab a little bit, a half a cup of chicken stock, and I'm gonna add this away from me just in case it spatters. That wasn't too bad, was it? I'm gonna go ahead and add the rest of the ingredients. I have a little bit of white or sweet miso that goes in. I also have some oyster sauce. Great flavor in oyster sauce, nice and mellow. And in here is a small diced shallot. There's also some garlic, ginger, and a little bit of black pepper right on top. And that goes in as well. What I'll do is I'll actually increase the heat to medium, and that will help expedite the process of pulling all that caramel, which is still a little bit hard on the bottom of the pan, and pulling that back into the solution while at the same time, like merging all those different flavors. Oh, and one more thing that was in there, one tablespoon of neutral oil. This is grapeseed oil, okay? With all of the ingredients in here, I just wanna keep mixing it until the white miso is in solution. Uh, all the caramel is pulled up off the bottom back into solution, and it comes to just barely a simmer. At that point, I'll be adding the Arctic char. Adjust the heat to where it's just barely a simmer. At this point, we're gonna add the uh, little blocks of Arctic char, skin side up, okay? I'm gonna cook this in this soon to be thickened sauce, skin side up, for five minutes. After five minutes, I will carefully get underneath it, flip it, and cook it for five more minutes. Now, meantime, because I wanna serve this with some garlic spinach, I'm gonna readjust the heat, put it off to the side, and I'm gonna get onto that garlic spinach. A proper saute garlic spinach is one of the fastest and easiest things to pull off. Yes, we only have 10 minutes to cook this fish, but it's so much time to make this properly. What you wanna do is you wanna get a large saute pan, put it over medium high heat until it's nice and hot. I'm gonna add, say, a tablespoon of oil, and it will shimmer, if not smoke, almost right away. I'm gonna swirl the pan to evenly distribute the oil, and then I'm gonna add one handful, not more than that, one handful of spinach, uh, a little bit of sliced garlic, some salt and pepper, and just stir it around for about 30 to 45 seconds until it's wilted down, maybe a little bit charred in places. 
At that point, immediately pull it out of the pan onto a large sheet pan covered with parchment paper so that it doesn't cause, what is that, like a spinach moat where you have all that water at the bottom of the bowl. That way you can get the next one done in plenty of time in order to finish that fish. The sauteed garlic spinach done in a snap. I'm still actually waiting for the five minutes on the other side of the fish, the Arctic char, to finish cooking. Once that five minutes is up, I'm gonna gently remove them from the sauce, put them on a side plate, because you don't want it to overcook. That will give you enough time to get your rice ready, the sauteed spinach is ready, and it's time to eat. Don't you love it when you can throw together a very elegant, delicious meal in about 15 minutes? I love this dish. I grabbed a little bit of rice, whatever rice you have on hand. Also, a grain would work really well with this. And of course, this sauteed spinach, fresh garlic, couldn't be easier. And it's wonderful to have a proper sauteed garlic spinach where there's not a moat of spinach water sitting in here. It's beautiful, it's seasoned wonderfully. And speaking of lots and lots of flavor, let's talk about this sauce, shall we? We have the garlic, the miso, it's thickened as a sauce, but it didn't start that way because we started with that really thin chicken stock. That's gonna, I mean, that alone, that's pretty, that's pretty great. But of course, the start of the show is this Arctic char. Now, Arctic char, I think I have maybe a quarter pound right here. A third of a pound would work beautifully as well. And I have a feeling, look at that, mm, that it's gonna be beautifully cooked. Just something that just falls apart it's not dry, I'm, I'm getting a little sneak peek in here. Yes, it's dry, I've made this a million times before. I know it's gonna be great, but let's grab a nice healthy bite of everything. It's <laughs> sweet and savory. It has a little pops of, uh, of the garlic and ginger. It's really elegant, it's familiar too. It's like, um, you know, you go to a nice restaurant and you order, say, mushrooms with oyster sauce and somebody who's trained lots and lots of times in order to make a dish this elegant, but yet we've made it here in less than 20 minutes. And that sauce is so special, it's so elevated. I tried to make this sauce so many different ways without caramelizing the granulated sugar. I tried light brown sugar, I tried dark brown sugar. What about regular granulated sugar with molasses? None of it worked because the flavor compounds, as I said before, over a hundred you just can't replicate. The Arctic char, because it's sort of poached in all that yummy flavor, it didn't overcook. And of course, we pulled it out. It's, it's like sexy, it's silky. And that garlic spinach has a certain minerality that kind of pulls this whole thing, and the rice grounds it all down. This dish, because you can make it so fast, it's easy, it has so much flavor, this would work as a, a weeknight meal, right? But it's elegant enough that it could work for a date night meal, ha ha. If your parents are coming over, this is something really special. Nobody has to know how quickly you pull it together. In my book, this is a winner of a recipe and I cannot wait for you to try it. So let me know how it goes and enjoy. Cheers.